Bethany Mandel joins me. She's a columnist extraordinaire and the author of Stolen News. Good morning, Bethany. You're trying to get to Israel. Why? Why? Um, so I've been helping a couple of hostage families deal with U.S. media, and I want to meet them. I want to. I want to be there. I want to see what's going on on the on the ground. It's been an excruciating three months, and um, and I want to just like set foot on the soil myself. How how will you take? all or any of your brood with you no no okay, it was so funny I was, talking to my, yeah, yeah. I was talking to my 10 year old about it and i asked if she wanted to come and she said i don't want to go on a death tour and i said okay that's fair <laughs> that's fair at 10 that's fair now yeah. uh, you need a private plane because apparently it's hard to get to israel these days is that because the demand is off the charts no, it's because almost all of the airliners have stopped flying there, except for El Al, which is extremely expensive. And so all of the messages that I got last night when I asked on Twitter, um, folks told me you have to fly to Europe uh, and then on a separate itinerary, book a flight from Paris, Munich, whatever, on El Al um, from Europe to Tel Aviv, which like, are there worse things in the world? to go to Paris for a day and then get on a plane to Tel Aviv? I think not. So maybe that's right. what I'll well, do. I want, I want the audience to know, if you're flying to Israel this week or next, Bethany Mandel needs a lift. Uh, Bethany, <laughs> I check, and I want to communicate this to people, I check the Times of Israel every hour. Last hour, they assassinated a leading Hezbollah activist because 40 missiles went over. I don't think the American people realize what's going on on the northern border, do you? I don't. And it's something that I've actually been thinking about a lot, that a lot of folks are really uh, unaware, not only of the back and forth that's happening on the northern border. I just got, I, I think, 15 or 20 notifications that uh, there were hostile aircraft intrusions in the north, but that most of the folks that are living in the north on the border um, with Lebanon have evacuated and a lot of their homes have already been destroyed. And so I think there's not there's already not enough conversation about displaced Israelis in general, but everyone assumes that all of them are from the southern communities bordering the Gaza Strip. But there's also a lot of refugees coming from the north who are displaced as well. Um, Israel is dealing with a humanitarian crisis, the likes of which um, it has never it has never dealt with before. Let's pause on this because I I understand why Claudine Gay became a target because she plagiarized and she embarrassed Harvard and Harvard had anti-Semitism. But I kind of regret that we lost the thread. We were focused on 10-7, the existential battle that Israel is in. And now we're focused on the presidential campaign and Claudine Gay and all the variety of political controversies blowing around it. And we've sort of lost the thread, or do you think I'm overstating that? I, I'm afraid we've lost the thread that we are on the edge of what could be World War Four. I think we have. I think you're absolutely correct. I mean, it was it was frustrating to see the conversation turn into only plagiarism, which was a huge problem um, at Harvard. But it, it didn't it didn't rest with with that. The reason that all of our attention was on Harvard was because of uh, because of her testimony at the anti-Semitism hearings and the situation on the northern border. I mean, Hezbollah is backed up by Iran. This is not just some rogue state. Um, the fact that all of these missiles and hostile aircraft intrusions, I have friends who have visited the IDF on the northern border, and they're they're nervous. They're nervous about IDF readiness. They're nervous about uh, the fact that the IDF is stretched so thin on the Gaza Strip and now on the northern border. Um, it's it's a scary time, and I and I think you're correct that a lot of people don't realize how close we are to a real catastrophe. And and if Israel goes to war, I'm confident they will win. But they'd rather not go to war. They'd rather that Hezbollah yeah. pull back the Latani River. But we're not even talking about it. Last question. How did you react to learning that Lloyd Austin was in intensive care and the president of the United States did not know that the chain of command was not functioning? I mean, if, if I had a, a regular job, just a normal job, and there was something riding on my competence, if I didn't have anyone tell my boss that I was out of commission, and I think my suspicion is we heard that he was in the ICU because he had had an elective procedure. I think that's what's going on here. I think that there was some embarrassment about the fact that this was an elective procedure that went awry somehow and sent him into the ICU. I'm sorry, I don't care. Don't don't get an elective procedure if like you you you're job and your duty is to the American people. And if you're not able to perform that job, 
you need to disclose that. I think this is a fireable offense. So, oh, so do I. I, I. I can't believe we've got American naval ships under fire every day. We've got bases all across the yep. Middle East under fire every day. And we've got a major war with our major ally. And our Secretary of Defense goes missing for five days and in the intensive care unit. And his deputy doesn't know. And the National Security Advisor and the president doesn't know. I, yeah, and the deputy it was really, on vacation. Yeah, it just seems to me that, that that the Keystone cops are there and Joe Biden's Delaware speech about threats to democracy, holy tone deaf. I, I close there, 30 seconds. What did you make of the president's latest democracy is in danger speech? I didn't pay attention. I don't pay attention to this stuff. I don't care. He, he yammers on and so much of what he says doesn't make coherent sense. I mean, it's like me in the morning after not having slept for four days, but that's him all the time.